Hello, um, so we're continuing with my review notes for a life science and cell biology in a nutshell. So um, learning about the role of cholesterol in the membrane of cells. So since cells are mostly comprised of phospholipid molecules, um, shown here is with the uh, blue and the two tails, the blue bubble. <laughs> The blue uh, round bubble represents the polar uh, head group of the phospholipids, um, the phosphate group, as well as the alcohol group attached to it. Um, and the two tails are the, um, which are uh, bound to the polar head group via uh, the glycerol backbone. Uh, they are two fatty acid to tails. So between phospholipids, you have cholesterol molecules in the membrane. And um, the function of the cholesterol molecules, which is a steroid, <clears throat> um, is the following. Um, so um, cholesterol is, is uh, interacts with the phospholipids because it is bipolar. Just like phospholipids, it has a polar head group. It has a hydroxy group um, interacting with the polar end of the phospholipid. Um, so the phosphate and the, um, one of four uh, amino groups, which we learned about previously. And then the four cyclic rings, three, six carbon, one, five carbon, and a long hydrocarbon tail, which are the, um, comprise the nonpolar end of the mo cholesterol molecule, interact with the two nonpolar fatty acid tails of the phospholipid. So in the bilayer, this is how the molecules interact. So um, the hydrophobic ends and the hydrophilic ends interact together. So, so the um, cholesterol molecule increases stability of the bilayer membrane due to its, um, and it increases the fluidity of the layer. So, stability um, is increased because um, it, uh, the cholesterol reduces lateral movement of the molecules of the bilayer and controls permeability of the membrane to molecules within the bilayer with its polar OH groups attracting the polar head groups of phospholipid. It holds the membrane together, increases its stability, preventing it from breaking down under stress such as at high temperatures. So it increases the integrity of the um, membrane. Um, as well, it, in, it increases the fluidity of, of the layer because of its nonpolar aspect, because uh, of its um, nonpolar um, uh, um, fused rings and, um, and the hydrophobic tail. Um, due to these steric reasons, the cholesterol prevents the phospholipid molecules from stacking and, or coming too close to one another and becoming too rigid um, and from freezing at very low temperatures. So depending on the environment, cholesterol helps with um, the stability and as well as the fluidity of the membrane. Fats provide energy as well, insulation, storage of fatty acids for many um, organisms. Fats may be saturated having single bonds or unsaturated having double bonds. Unsaturated fats may be cis with hydrogens in the same plane. Um, or trans with hydrogens in two different planes. Hyd so again, um, saturated having single bonds, unsaturated having um, also double bonds within the chain. Example is uh, olive oil, which is an unsaturated, monounsaturated, has a single double bond, whereas canola oil, a uh, 
polyunsaturated has more than one double bond. Omega-3 fatty acid, omega-6 fatty acid are essential for human biological processes. They must be ingested in the diet. They cannot be synthesized. Fats have important functions. Many vitamins are fat soluble. Fats serve as a long-term storage form of fatty acids and act as a source of energy and provide insulation, insulation for the body. So glycerol and fatty acids. A fat molecule consists of two main components, glycerol and fatty acids. So this is the structural formula of glycerol, which is three carbons, three hydroxy groups. So glycerol is an alcohol with the, um, a total of one to five hydrogens, three OH groups, three carbon backbone. Um, fatty acids, fatty acids um, have a long chain of hydrocarbons shown here with the carbo carboxyl group, which is a COOH, um, and the Fatty acids may have between 4 to 36 carbons in the chain. Most of them have 12 to 18. In a fat molecule, the fatty acids are attached to each of the um, three carbons of the glycerol molecule um, with an ester bond, which is a double bond on one of the oxygen, one of the two oxygens. Um, so one single and one double bond coming out of a, off of a carbon to two oxygens. Um, which is, that's an ester bond. During the ester bond formation, three molecules are released. Since fats consist of three fatty acids and a glycerol, they are also called triacylglycerols or triglycerides. So triacylglycerol, um, so you have three carbons um, and three fatty acid chains. So that's the glycerol backbone. Um, so this is a fat molecule right here. Um, and the ester bond is shown right here. So the um, hydroxy groups uh, are in turn um, becoming um, ester bonded um, fatty acid tails. So um, triacylglycerol is formed by joining three fatty acids to glycerol backbone in a dehydration reaction. Three molecules of water are released in the process. So that's how the ester bonds are formed. So saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids. Again, fatty acids may be either un, either un or saturated. In a fatty acid chain, um, if there are only single bonds between neighboring carbons in the hydrocarbon chain, the fatty acid is, uh, uh, is a saturated chain. Saturated fatty acids are saturated with hydrogen, since single bonds increase the number of hydrogens on each carbon. Um, stearic acid and palmitic acid are commonly found in meat are examples of saturated fats. When the hydrocarbon chains um, con contain a double bond, the fatty acid is unsaturated. Oleic acid is an example. Most uh, unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature are called oils. If there's one double bond, it is a monounsaturated, for example, olive oil. If there's more than one double bond, it is polyunsaturated, for example, canola oil. And unsaturated fats help to lower blood cholesterol levels, whereas saturated fats contribute to plaque formation in the arteries since they're more rigid. Unsaturated fats 
um, or oils are of plant origin usually. 